It's March 22nd, and the temperatures are staying above 50 degrees Fahrenheit, 10 degrees Celsius, and the bees are out. The winter in central Maine is starting to loosen its grip, and the bees are finally getting a hint of spring. Hi, I'm Boris the Bee Guy from Forest Beehive Apiary, where we practice natural beekeeping. Today, we'll talk about our spring inspection and about feeding the bees in case their honey stores are low. But first, just a brief note on what natural beekeeping is and what it is not. Natural beekeeping is not a carbon copy of how feral bees live in the wild. With this feral beehive here, in the middle of a natural tropical forest, there's no beekeeper, so there's no natural beekeeping either. But here comes Lucy, a natural beekeeper. Lucy is serious about taking care of her favorite feral beehive by protecting it from other monkeys, as well as from birds and various other predators. Lucy loves the bees, but she may not be 100% altruistic with taking care of her bees, as she really enjoys her Lucy's wilderness honey. Lucy is a natural beekeeper because natural beekeeping is just beekeeping without any unnatural chemical or artificial crap in and around the beehives. So Lucy here, is a natural beekeeper for the following reasons. There's no unnatural human-engineered chemicals in and around Lucy's beehive. Lucy also does not use any acids or essential oils to medicate her bees. Since Lucy's bees are not medicated, they can do whatever bees did for thousands of years, use natural selection to defeat any parasites on their own. And lastly, Lucy's beehive is within the right natural habitat so that land and water around are unpolluted by pesticides, insecticides, fungicides, and herbicides, and Lucy's bees have enough foraging in all seasons. As a result, Lucy's bees do not need any artificial supplemental sugar feedings that adversely affect both the bees and their honey. Lucy may or may not know of Thomas Seeley, a world-renowned Cornell University professor who extensively studied the behavior and social life of honeybees for decades. For Thomas Seeley, 75% of all feral swarms of honeybees do not survive. Nature can be randomly unforgiving to the bees, for example, with a long stretch of bad weather, drought, flood, predators, etc. Natural beekeepers, including Lucy, can mitigate many of the above risks and assure much better survival odds. At our forest beehive apiary in central Maine, we also have plenty of clean, unpolluted land and water but, unlike Lucy's, our winters are cold and long, which makes beekeeping in cold winter climates extra challenging. It's March 22nd, and it's our first spring inspection. In the picture, I just opened the top lid of the horizontal hive. You can see that almost two-thirds of the beehive cavity is empty, and the bees have overwintered in a smaller third of the beehive, topped with a brown sackcloth pillow. By midsummer, I will gradually expand this particular beehive up to its full capacity of 20 frames as the bee colony grows explosively in summer. And then, in late fall, as the number of bees naturally dwindles, I will narrow down the bee space to 7 to 8 frames, flanked with divider boards on each side. So back to my spring inspection. I had no winter losses so far. But upon inspection, I saw that one of the bee colonies was really running low on their own honey stores and I needed to feed that colony. As the bee's health is important to me, I don't do any supplemental sugar feedings. So for emergency feeding, what do you think I feed the bees with? By the way, I absolutely would not feed with honey from any unverified sources. A lot of commercial honey is contaminated with so-called foul brood bacteria. I had a couple of good options for feeding. I could feed the bees with their own honey, harvest it in the fall, and mix it one-to-one -one with water but had a second, even better option. During fall harvest, before uncapping the honey, I've used the extractor to spin out the uncapped honey separately, and I stored it in the fridge. Uncapped honey is a partially dehydrated nectar. If it were fully dehydrated, the bees would have capped it with wax. Uncapped honey has to be kept in the fridge because compared to matured capped honey, its water content is at least twice higher and it can easily get fermented. You may notice that as opposed to our fall honey, the uncapped honey that was kept in the fridge got crystallized. Temperatures lower than 50 degrees Fahrenheit, 
10 degrees Celsius, cause honey to crystallize. It still tastes delicious, not only to the bees, but to me as well. If your honey does not crystallize, it could be adulterated. By the way, there are some beekeepers that use artificial measures to prevent honey from crystallization. And I even found the strangest advice from none other than American Test Kitchen on how to prevent honey from crystallization. By adding corn syrup to honey? That's a total adulteration of honey, unhealthy and unsavory at the same time. This simple feeder is made of food-grade plastic in Spain, a country where there's over a million of similar lane-style horizontal beehives. This feeder fits inside the beehive like an extra frame, and as opposed to conventional outside feeders, this feeder has the advantage of minimizing robbing by bees from other beehives, which can create total mayhem in the apiary. I will make another inspection in a week or so to see if I have to add more uncapped honey. See you in future videos. Thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe.